This application will allow you to scrape any website of the internet and then you can start talking to that website in natural language. Let's say for example, I want to know more about model context protocol MCPs. I can go to this website, copy the URL, add it in here, click on add URL, then do the same thing for this website in here. Same thing, add URL. I will then click on scrape plus embed. This will basically launch the scraping in the backend. So Core 4 AI is going to go ahead and scrape the data and then it will be embedded inside of a super base, inside of a database where I can just start asking questions. So let's say, for example, I want to ask about something very straightforward. What is an MCP server? And here you will see that it will give me the exact answer that I'm looking for. MCP server, MCP is a lightweight program, etc., etc. And now you can ask me, why do I need to get this application up and running when I can just go to ChatGPT or Claude Sonnet and basically do the same thing? And my answer is that let's try that. Let's try that together and see how it's going to go. So we are in ChatGPT now and let's ask what is an MCP server? I'm using GPT 4.5. It's the same thing. Whatever model we're going to ask, it's going to be the same thing. So as you can see here, it's going to give me an answer that has nothing to do with the model context protocol. It's going to talk about something about Minecraft, which I think it's more popular than the model context protocol that have just been introduced in November last year. And the answer that ChatGPT gave is not wrong. It just our question does not have context. So our application actually gave context to the questions that we're asking and pinpoints exactly what we are looking for. We don't want to give any extra context. The knowledge have already been embedded. It's already in the database. And then we can ask questions that are specific to that context. It's basically a rag application. So now we can ask ChatGPT to do either search or even scrape a website in order to give the data. But it's never going to be the same way as actually having your URL in here and then embedding that URL in a database and then the model will go ahead and search in that database to give you the exact answer that you want. This type of application with embeddings is always going to be better than just using any generic LLM in order to do the work. And as you can see here, the cost is so cheap. Why? Because after doing the embedding, we can use any cheap model and it's going to be really good at just getting the data. So we're not waiting for the model to be really good to give us good answers because basically the data is already ready and we just go ahead and search for it. Okay, so now that we have this application, what are the type of use cases where we can use this application? And actually, we can use it for a lot of things. For example, if we are preparing for an interview, we can just go ahead and go to the exact websites that we know have the right data for our interview and then add them in here and start asking questions about that specific data that we have scraped. We can also use it to prepare for any type of certification. So if you are Let's say, for example, preparing for an AWS certification, you can just go to specific websites, scrape them, and then start asking questions about them in here. There are a lot of other use cases that you can see on the screen, but the use case where I find myself using this the most is with coding. So, for example, when we are creating a Next.js project with ChatCN, a lot of times ChatCN basically introduces new components. Let's say, for example, the sidebar. And if you ask questions about the sidebar to the LLM, it basically does not know it exists because it's a new one. It does not have the tag new, but it just has been introduced like a couple of months ago. So this sidebar, as far as the LLM is concerned, does not exist. But it's actually a very good component that has been added by ChatCN and we can use it easily without having to create our own sidebar if we are coding. So here, what, what I do is that I come here, I copy this, I come back to the rag, I clear the URL, I add my new URL, I add URL, and here I click scrape and embed. I will come back here and then I can start basically asking any question about the sidebar. So let's say, for example, I want to ask a question about the persisted state. Let's say, for example, how can I make the sidebar state persist in Next.js? So let's come back here. Let's ask, how can I make this sidebar state persist in Next.js? And as you can see here, it will give me the exact data that I had in my website with the code exactly as I asked for it. So as you can see here, it uses cookies to store the current state of the sidebar. If we go back here to make the sidebar start state persist, you can utilize cookies to store the sidebar open and close state. Here is how you can do it. This is the code. This is basically the exact answer that I'm looking for. I know that I am using really specific use cases that only help me with my daily work. 
but you can basically customize this application to work on any website. So virtually it can answer to any data for any use case that you have. One project that this application really helped me basically just go ahead with it is my new website. So I created a new website, automationcampus.com. And as you can see here, the websites look so much better than my previous website. And if you go around, you will see that, you know, it's a good enough website that can actually be shared. My previous website looked like this. As you can see here, this is nothing compared to my new website. So this application, because I had fed it the right data about my specific websites, about the libraries that I was using, about the specific context of my projects and embedded it inside of a database, it has been able to help me so much better compared to even the best models when I am using ChatGPT directly. All right, so this time we are going to do things different. I am not gonna go through the code. I am going to show you how to set this up on your machine first, get it up and running. And then after that, I will show you how I created this application, what are the choices I made behind the scenes in order to make it very easy to use so as always i will share the code with you for free all you need to do is click on the link that you find in the description and in the first comments and then you will be able to access this page where you can download the project all i ask is a subscription and maybe a like that would be awesome so here just click on i want this and then you basically gonna put your email address and then after that you can get that that is great so after that you will have this page and you will also have it on your email you will receive it uh, click on download you will have the project downloaded and then that project we will open it inside of vs code let me go to downloads extract here let's extract this for this zip in here and after that let's go ahead and open it inside of our vs code so let's open the folder let's go to the folder and let's open it good now let's open the terminal the first thing that we always start with is create our own virtual environment of course you're going to have everything set up you're going to have vs code you should have python downloaded as well and after that we are going to be able to open the folder and go and create our virtual environment so python m vnv vnv we will have our virtual environment that is going to be created inside of here after that, let's select the virtual environment. So VNV slash scripts slash activate. Let's open one of the one of the files just to make sure that we have our virtual environment that is selected in here. You're gonna see that we have the VNV selected inside of here, which is very good. So now let's pip install dash r requirements. Great, so now it has finished. So as you can see here, I am not having any errors inside of my application. Everything has been installed, downloaded, everything is nice and clean. Good, so now let's run the application. It's not gonna work right away, but let's run it. So streamlit run streamlit app.py. This is how you run your streamlit application. And here you will have your streamlit application open inside the browser if it doesn't open just go to localhost go to localhost with the port number that is shown in here in my case is 8501 so when you're going to open it for the first time it's going to show you that superbase is not configured and it's absolutely crucial for your project to work that's why we need to configure superbase so to be able to do that you just need to go to superbase then go to let me just log out just to show you how to do it from the start Create a new account, so sign up now, create a new account with GitHub, and once you create the new account with GitHub, you will be able to access the dashboard that we have here. After doing that, if this is your first time in Superbase, just create a new organization, call it test1 for example, and once you create the organization, it will ask you to create a project. Here I cannot create the projects because I am already creating the maximum number of projects that I have here, so I will just go back here and access the project that I have already created. So once you're done with creating the project, you can give whatever names you want. You will have this page that we have here, project overview. And inside of this project overview, we will come here and copy the project URL. You will come back to the project, go to the .env, paste your project in here, and then API key ain't on public. You will come back here and then paste it inside of here and save after doing that let's go back to our, our rag application and see what we need to do after that so we have copy pasted the uh, superbase url and the anon key and put them inside the .env file now we need to create our tables this code that we have here let's click on copy let's come back here let's go to sql editor and here let's paste let's click on run it will create the markdown tables if we go back to table editor we will see that two new tables have just been created we will go back here and now we will create our match embedding function so let's copy this again 
let's go back here let's paste let's run it and here it's gonna say success and now if i go to database and i go to functions and i search for embedding filtered i will find it right here that is crucial that is really important so after doing that it is just smooth sailing from there now we need to copy paste our api keys and rerun the application basically so let's go get our api keys so here i will just paste my api keys in here just paste your own api keys you can just use one of them if you don't want to use all of these models okay now all we need to do is stop the application close vs code and open it again and now let's go back to the terminal and let's run the application again so streamlit run streamlit app.py and now it's going to open the application and hopefully this time it is going to work and it's not going to show me the page that it has shown me before great so as you can see here now i have the application up and running this is all i needed to do so let's go to any random wikipedia page so here we have the current events let's take this and let's put it inside of here let's add the url let's click on scrape plus embed if i go to the back end this will start the scraping of that page then it will add that markdown inside of the markdown data table and then it will chunk it and add it to the embedding data table in order for me to go ahead and start interacting with it it could take a second if the page is so large then the chunking will be so much there's so much to basically divide in that markdowns in order to add it to the embeddings data table but it shouldn't be that long as you can see here it's added 93 chunks meaning that it's found data that it has been able to chunk in order to add to the embeddings table and now i can come back here and the cost is still not even at one cent even though that the page was basically very 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 long so here if i go back and i ask it let's say for example tell me five current events that are happening right now so here it would basically go to the embedding table as you can see here all of these are embeddings of the chunks and it will search inside of them in order to give me the answer and as you can see here it will basically give me five answers from this page so it is working and it should be working on every page that you want it to make it work with great so now that we have been able to set up this application let's go ahead and go to the last part where i am going to explain to you how does this application actually works if you want to change it what are the changes that you need to make for some websites where it does not work correctly and how you can basically customize it as much as you want by changing the code base that i have created what you need to understand about this application is that i have created already an application that does basically scraping to structured data and i have based this application on that so instead of getting structured data i just create embeddings and from those embeddings i will go ahead and use one of these models that we have here in order for me to basically be able to interact with those embeddings so the embeddings themselves are created by the model ada so you don't have the choice i have by default created the embeddings using the model text embeddings ada 002 and you're not going to have a choice as far as changing that simply because if you are going to change that you need to change the structure of the database every time and that's not possible so that's why the embeddings will always happen with this model in here but, but let's start from the beginning the first thing that happens once we give the url inside of the application so inside of our code once we click on scrape plus embed we will call the fetch and store markdowns from the markdowns.py. So here I have the function fetch and store markdowns. And this function basically uses the library crawl for AI in order to basically get markdowns from that specific website or websites. Once we get that markdown, we will go ahead and save that markdown inside of this markdowns table, markdowns table. And once we do that, we go ahead and go to the second part where we're going to do the embeddings. As you can see here, the most important thing to remember from this function markdowns is that you will generate a unique name because you will need a unique name. That's what was going to help us to basically locate that specific markdown. So if we go to Streamlit application, you are going to see that once we are done with the uh, scraping part, we are going to go to do basically the embedding part where we are going to start the embedding. And for the embedding, we are going to call embed markdowns that is going to be coded inside of embeddings.py. Here, the most important function is this. It will basically use all of the other functions in order to work. But what we do is that we will give it a unique name in order for it to be able to locate the markdowns from the markdowns table. 
and first chunking the text it will chunk the text to chunk sizes of 800 with an overlap of 100 and once it does that it will go ahead and use embed text in order to embed this text and get the embeddings and the cost and once we do these two parts so the chunking and the embedding we will go ahead and add it at every chunk with its embedding inside of the data tables embedding table so once we do that the job is finished we will just report how many chunks have we created and have added to the table and that's basically it so let's go back to our streamless application now let's go ahead and get to the chat interface so in case both the scraping and the embedding is successful and i have the state completed this is where i am going to show the chat interface and this chat interface will be just retrieval so this chat interface will take the user question will go ahead and retrieve relevant chunks which is a function that i have defined in chat inside of retrieval and this retrieval function all it's going to do is go ahead and it does similarity search in order to find the top three relevant chunks in order to answer the question that i gave it you can change that by changing the top k in here if you want it to get 10 chunks for example if you know that your your answers are scattered around and you need more text you can absolutely go ahead and change that to 5 10 20 it does not matter so the idea is you would go ahead and do retrieval just like any other application you will get the response and then you will feed that response to an llm and then it will parse the answer in a really understandable format so this is where i am calling the call LLM model and I will give it the context text. This is the relevant chunks, the model. This is actually which model we are using here. This is where the model comes in, which model we are using here, the Gemini, DeepSeek, etc. We are going to give it the system prompt. This is already defined inside of the assets. So I have a system prompt in here just to give it context of what we are trying to do, to give it an idea about this application. And then the user message, which is going to be a combination of the prompt of the user plus the user message that we already have inside of assets as well. This one, extract the following information provided. So we emphasize that the most important thing is the user request, which is prompt the upper. I emphasize it by making it upper so that it's understand that this is actually the questions that we are trying to ask. And that is basically it. We add everything to the cost. Once we run this, we get the cost and this cost, we will add it to the embedding at the start in order for us to keep track of how much we are spending. But you really don't have to worry about the cost. It's really, really, really cheap. If we are giving a lot of text to an LLM model, and every time we have to give it to it again and again and again, either with caching or basically straight out just giving it a text and ask it questions about that text. This is where we have to start worrying about how much is the cost. But with a RAG application, it's really cheap. You really don't have to worry about it. That's actually the advantage of embeddings and retrieval augmented generation applications. Anyway, so that's basically the whole application. We're not going to go through every line of code. I know that I have used light LLM in my in my model in order for me to keep everything dynamic. If you want to change or add models, you go to the asset, you add the model in here, you go to the, the .env, you add the model API key in here, and that's basically it. You just add the model and light LLM will go ahead and do the work for you. You don't need to do anything. So yeah, if you guys have any questions, if there is something else that you want me to show about this application, it will actually be good. But I want to actually talk about more things than just scraping. I've been talking about scraping for so many videos now. So maybe I will go to talk about MCP servers or AI agents in general. Other things that I have been doing and have not been sharing with you guys on my YouTube channel. So, so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching until now. Thank you so much. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will catch you guys next time. Peace.